So we just touched down in Varmabeche. It's pretty quickly turned into a Womad on Z. Uh, looks like the Narc Squad's here. Let's go and confiscate some puff. <laughs> and Kosh Smithies. It's like Altamont again. In southern Romania, on the coast of the Black Sea, is a beach that was built as a utopia. Vamaveke was born in the aftermath of a violent revolution when the people overthrew the communist Ceausescu regime in 1989. Since then, every summer Vamaveke has opened up its arms to a young generation of Romanian flower children, chasing perfect sunsets and spiritual enlightenment. Touching down in the middle of the summer season, it appeared that like Ibiza, Ayanapa and Goa, Vamaveke had followed the path of so many other hippie retreats turned party towns, becoming more about EDM than enlightenment. Not so much turning on, tuning in and dropping out, more turning yourself off and falling over. At this point, the Vibe Police came in and extinguished a fire on the beach. Was it just health and safety, or was he unwittingly symbolising the death of the hippie dream? There's a few tiki bars and that kind of thing about, but it seems like a very different kind of beach resort, actually. I mean, whilst you've got a lot of the trappings, it's a lot more rustic, and the people here are definitely in, in search of something else. There's a lot of beads being sold, uh, a lot of crusty little mullets and stuff like that. Yeah, it kind of feels like a festival has come to the seaside and just sort of camped up here. But that festival feels about 40 years old. It's like Woodstock came to town and never left. Vamaveke started out as nothing more than a beach, without even electricity. But as more and more young Romanian idealists descended on the place, it grew. And soon bar owners in Bucharest took notice of the opportunities here, and the beach became a boho benedorm. We spoke to some of the psychedelic seasonaires to find out more about the spirit of Vamaveke. Well, my father and my mother used to come here a lot when they were students. Back then, well, it was a little different. The students came here because it was cheaper and free. And time by time, things change, you know. I would say 60% of the population is really great people, and the other 40% are like people like, oh wow, I came to beach, look, I put my stuff over here, I think it's not pictures, okay, I'm getting some stuff and go back home. Great. This is Vamaveke nowadays. Vamaveke was a community, and now it's, it's a business. When you find that romantic part, <laughs> and you go, not to go to drink, oh, I'm in Vamaveke, ah! No, to feel, to feel the um, es es essence. Vama Vecchia, how do I say? Change back in the way you used to be, and everything's going to be fine. Don't continue this commercializing shit. Don't go with all these five star stupid hotels. Just go back to the old days when you were really great and really awesome. This place is special. My opinion doesn't matter how much corporate comes here, how many more hotels are built and so on. The vibe that the people set 15, 20 years ago will remain. But not everyone here was too concerned with the growing commercial influence on the beach. We're looking for a girlfriend for <laughs> sex. <laughs> and we're gonna drink and party all night. Party all night. The whole place has got a very bohemian sort of feel about it. It feels like sort of LA in the 70s, quite Laurel Canyon. I mean, it's very hippie-ish, but I think like the Black Sea gives it this sort of element of darkness and there's a bit of chaos to the whole thing. It feels like, I don't know, like Charles Manson might be about or something. Like all teenagers, the people I met on the beach believed they had all the answers. But apparently there was a remaining old guard, a kind of hippie dad's army, who remembered a very different Vamaveke. So, I went to the tourist information centre to find out more. Some old timers around here that yes. could 
pretty much told you about the 70s and the 60s. Yeah, that's for sure. They they pop up around here, stay until September or something. You just have to look for them. They're around. And sure enough, I found them, propping up the bar like every night in the summer, a motley crew of salty beach dogs. Varna Vecchia, it was a little village, 20, 30, 40 houses, a beach, sand and sea. People who want to find the quietness, to find the silence, come to Varna Vecchia. It was a place in the beginning and it's start keep it liberty, liberty of mind, liberty of spirit. And when many young people who want to feel the liberty, want to feel the individuality, want to feel themselves and without all the frustration of the town, came here to escape. It's an alternative to all what is ugly, heavy, artificial in the daily life in the society. This little village, Vama Veke, became the center of the town. In Vama Veke, at four o'clock in the morning, it's more life than you have in Bucharest. Every day, it's a ritual in Vama Veke that people wait to see the sun. It's coming up on the music of Bolero, of Ravel. And there are people who come from Bucharest only for one hour to be in Vama Veke, to hear the Bolero, to see the sunset, and to go back to the work with more energy. We'd heard that the man who first brought Bolero to the beach was a bartender called Ovidiu, who three years ago disappeared in mysterious circumstances. And I wonder what caused him to leave. Ovidiu was an idealist. For him, it was very difficult to see how much the people was changed that coming here. For me, the change is something natural, is a transformation. Nothing remained the same. We find our places in all this changement or not. You know, sometimes in the life you love a woman very much, but you know that in this moment you cannot live with her. So it's like a love affair with a town. Exactly. <laughs> So this is it. Because this is Avidius's great legacy in this place. The playing of Bolero at 6 a.m. every night in the summer. It seems to be like a real ritual here. We had a lead that Ovidiu had moved to the other side of the country, across the Carpathian Mountains and deep into the heart of Transylvania. We weren't quite sure what we'd find out from Ovidiu, or if we'd even find him, but his self-imposed exile seemed to tell the story of what had happened in Vamaveke. So we set off on a long and far from certain journey to find him. This is actually somewhere I've always wanted to come. I think it's somewhere that sort of looms quite large in people's collective imagination, the idea of Transylvania. One of the sort of most unique and beautiful places in the entire continent, really. It's not the kind of place you expect to go, making a series about clubs. We've been driving for about five hours now. Yeah, we've pretty much done the length of the country. Huge traffic jam. The romantic notions about getting away from it all and hitting the dust sort of um, pale into miserable insignificance when you're just stuck in a traffic jam. You're actually closer to civilization than you can possibly imagine because you're just stuck with loads and loads of other people all going through the same experience. It's like communism, really. Since the birth of the hippie movement, there have always been these spiritual talisman guiding their flock from a place of almost otherworldly enlightenment. But from Jim Morrison to John Lennon, history has often proven that being close to God and being a dickhead aren't mutually exclusive, which became a growing concern with every hour as we drove further and further through the mountains into Transylvania. You know, people talk about a video with a, you know, sort of mythological feel about him, like he's some kind of like 
shamanic figure, but um, he might just be a wanker. <laughs> We were traveling through the Carpathian Mountains into Transylvania, 14 hours into a perilous and perhaps questionable mission to find a mystical barman called Ovidiu. Eventually, we reached his mountain hideout. Okay. Okay. So, this is it. Um, it's a kind of abandoned hut kind of thing. And apparently a video's up here, so we're gonna go and meet him. A video. Hi. Hi. I'm Clive. Thank you for having us. Hey, <laughs> Good to meet you at last. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Oh, wow. What a part of the world. Hey, please. <laughs> Water. Yeah? Yes. Please. Thank you. That's not water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey. Hai să mergem într-un loc minunat. Yeah. Da, să vedem stelele. Cea mai mare bucurie în România era Bama Bică. Fără investiții. Eram noi acolo. Oamenii noștri simpli cu cortul nostru, cu nudismul nostru, cu muzica noastră, o plajă mică și atât. Nu era nicio legătură cu bani. Un suflet minunat. Niște oameni civilizați care trăiau civilizat în sălbăticie. Și oameni care gândeau liber. Ți-ai văzut jurul meu? Cum stai acum la foc și acolo era marea, clar că te îndrăgostei. Poți? Poliția? Nu. Primăria? Nu. Și n-am dat nevoie de chilo și de primar și de, de nimeni. One of the most famous things about a Vama Veke beach party is that every morning at 6 a.m. they play Bolero by Ravel. And we heard that was you that started it și Rabelu. Deci era o muzică care pentru mine mă liniștea. Iubesc muzică. Adică mă iubeam. Casa era chestia. Deci eu mă iubeam la răsărit de soră. Deci era mare, a fost florescentă și era o grămadă, aveai sirene acolo lângă tine, nu? Era o chestie de dragoste. <laughs> Poți să te îmbățișezi? Da? Mm. Poate? <laughs> Even though a video had left Vama Veke and wasn't coming back to what it is now, his ideas and the best parts of himself were still the best bits of Vama Veke. In a perfect symbiosis of person and place, a video was immortal in Vama Veke, and who and where he is now was somehow besides the point. Leaving him in his vow of solitude, we headed back to the coast to visit a very different beach. Mamaya. We've been drawn to Mamaya because of its polar opposite party prophet, Radu Mazare. Mazare was the mayor of the town, and whilst it was always a holiday resort, he transformed the beach into a moneyed, modern citadel. He was Mamaya's Boris Johnson, but his manner was more Balkan than Bullingdon. Mazare was part politician, part comedian, part criminal. He eventually ended up in jail on corruption charges, but his vision of Mamaya lives on for all that can afford to see it. Oh, Mama, it's a very beautiful place. It's uh, full of fun. If you are sad and come here in Mamaya, you can have fun one full weekend because everybody is so happy here, you know? Usually in the summer, I am having fun every day. Even if it's Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, you have a place where uh, you can have fun. And this is so cool. There was a lot of money to be made in post-communist Romania, and the first generation born into wealth are known as the Fitozi. The Fitozi are the young jet ski set, living a life built on table service and trust funds. Mamaya is their town, the Saint-Tropez of the Black Sea, 
a place of fast cars and fancy hats. Vin foarte foarte multe persoane cu influență, foarte multe persoane cu bani și nu sunt locuri pentru toată lumea. Banii nu sunt nu sunt o problemă pentru cei care îi produc și vor să și arate imaginea să cu cât cheltuiești mai mult cu at cu atât atragi fetele mai mult la tine. What's the most you can spend on a table in a club here? As the best uh, table is uh, 100,000 euros. 100,000 euros? Yes. Cash. Cash, fucking hell. Yes. Do you know exactly what you want here in Mamaya? Clubs, uh, drinks, have fun, party, relax, so stay at the things. sun. I don't know, yeah. His buddy yeah, is a Romanian champion. <laughs> They call him cheerful dog, no? Romania, you know, this is a place that had a communist dictatorship until 25 years ago. You've only got to look at the sort of very, very swanky beach bars and the fact that there are now massive cranes over there building more and more apartments. It feels like it's very much on the up. But if Mamaya seemed decadent in the day, it was at night that it really came alive. And if a video didn't like Vama Veke, then he really, really wouldn't like Mamaya. Saturday night, this is Mamaya Beach, and we're on our way to Fratelli, probably the swankiest club in the area. I'm incredibly underdressed. I look like a sort of sleazy tennis coach. You know, when you're living on the road like we are, you don't really have time to iron shirts. Clubs of Mamaya were packed with people spending money like it was going rotten the next day. This was a town literally built on sand, peddling the Mayfair, Abu Dhabi dream. It was Guetta capitalism in full effect, luxury nightlife for a new elite. Our guides for the night were a team of highly drilled PR girls. Oh my god, this is going to be crazy. It's full of young people, very vivid. Exceptional people, they know how to have fun and they know what they're looking for. Pretty demanding, actually. I mean, there's so much more technology, you know, DJs that are foreign, and they come here and they play international music. We need tourists to see clubs and to see how fun it is to come here, the most amazing beaches ever. It's just great. What makes Mamaya so special? It's something like Ibiza of Romania. It's the place... The Ibiza of Romania. <laughs> yeah. It's about the vibe, it's about the music, about the people. Everything is different here. Everything that you see, in the rest of Romania, it's more uh, picturesque or I don't know, but here it's about fun and about uh, having a good time. Well, that was quite an experience. Um, the whole thing was very luscious, very luxe, very European, kind of Fellini-esque a lot of white linen, a lot of girls who look incredibly disinterested with their husbands. People here seem to see something like Fratelli as being a really good advert for a new Romania that maybe puts it on a kind of more international map. And whilst that's, you know, undoubtedly a good thing, the truth is that a club like this is quite an identity experience. It could really be any number of any cities in the world. And um, I don't really think it tells you that much about an area as a club. You know, the culture around it certainly does, but as a night out, it really could be anywhere. In a way, you had to hand it to Mamaya for its honesty. It was what it wanted to be, a stock market trading floor with a smoke machine. But between the two beaches, there was one ritual that still meant something. So I headed back to Vamaveke to see Ovidiu's lasting impression on the beach, the Bolero, his 6 a.m. utopia. Deci gena mea nu e de sclav, indiferent unde aș trăi, da, sclav, da. N-am înțeles de ce. De ce trebuie să distrugem lucrul ăla? Pentru niște bani? Ce e important? Libertatea unui om sau niște bani? After a long, arduous night at Mamaia, we finally made it over to Vama Vece, where um, I guess Avidius's great legacy is about to kick off. They're playing in Bolero at 6 a.m. every night in the summer.
just before the new day starts, the deck chairs come out and everything returns to this kind of commercial beachside resort. There's a 10, 15 minute window where things kind of return to that utopian ideal that most of the people here who stayed here long enough remember. And I suppose that will be a video's lasting legacy. A video and his lot were doing something other in a state of just after communism. And the people here are doing it in the face of capitalism. So both have kind of become interchangeable actually in the last 25 years. And the one constant really is people trying to escape that, which is why places like Van Beke will always be here. And to an extent, it's also why places like Mamaya will always be there. Because as distant as they might seem, Mamaya and Van Beke are both reactions against the world we live in.